next video, we're continuing our electrical system upgrades. A couple videos ago, we improved our solar panels greatly. In this video, we're gonna show our new MPPT, our new inverters, and our new lithium ion batteries, all from Victron. My idea is to present this in a way that isn't totally dry, but isn't meant for an electrical engineer. So stay tuned and let's get at it. All right, we're in the starboard engine compartment. Uh, these are just some really old batteries. We have an MPPT. We have this uh, really small power inverter. It's 500 watt. We're going to get a inverter that runs uh, 230 volts, and we're going to get another one that's 110. So our uh, our boat will be both 110 and 230. Why we did that is because there's a lot of equipment on board that runs 230, though we're a North American native and all of our possessions run on 110. So we needed 110 so we don't have to replace everything that we own. And I didn't want to replace everything that's native to the boat. So it ends up being cheaper just to buy two inverters than it, uh, replace all that equipment. So that's why we did that. Plus it uh, increases our versatility if we have guests come on that are from Europe or 230 native. Uh, places then they can plug in the boat. We're just gonna have two plugs in a couple places in the boat. So and then we have this existing Victron Energy battery charger. That's gonna re be replaced with another piece of Victron equipment. I don't think we're gonna replace the switch boxes at all. When we first got the boat the area that I'm seated in, or crammed myself into, uh, was just a rat's nest of wire. I pulled probably half the wires that are in here right now out. They weren't being used, they weren't terminated, they were just abandoned wires. There's, I don't know, close to maybe 20 pounds worth of wire that I've pulled out of here. There's probably still, of the wires that are remaining in here, probably half of those I could also pull out but I don't because I don't know where they go. They weren't labeled and I need to do a lot more work and research before I start yanking wires that I don't know about. The wires that I did pull out were labeled. They aren't being used anymore. They're from old systems and I felt pretty confident that I could pull them out. If I didn't know what it was, I traced it, found the source, and if the source was abandoned also, then I pulled the whole length of, of cable out. It's locked down still in Greece right now, and I'm having a lot of difficulty finding the parts that I need. Things like a fuse box, fuses, wires, marine grade wire, um, tape. There's no electrical store that I can find that's open. The few parts that I have acquired are through the shop door when the, when the store is closed. You kind of have to do this speak easy kind of purchase where you knock on the door and you give them your money and they hand you a bag and you walk away because the shop merchants can be fined up to 5,000 euros if they get caught selling things during this lockdown so I don't want to put them in jeopardy of you know selling me five euros worth of fuses um, so it's not fair to them for me to ask for simple things like that so I'm having to make do with what we have I've gone so far as to take the fuse box out of a car that I found that was overturned and abandoned. I took the fuses out of it and now some of the fuses are here, which is really fortunate so we can run our systems, but the Greek lockdown is causing all kinds of trouble for me trying to do the electronics on the boat. The current leaving the MPPT is called direct current or DC. DC is the same kind of current that you'll find in common batteries. And it's the same current we have in our big lithium ion batteries. DC current is used by the lights on our boat, our laptops, our electronics, like our radar and our communication equipment. Alternating current is similar to what you'd find in a house that you typically use to plug in things like a coffee maker, a tea kettle, shop vacuum, heaters, and our inverters take the DC current from the batteries 
and convert it to AC so that we can have a coffee maker and a tea kettle and a shop back on our boat. Once we knew what we wanted, we contacted Victron Energy. They sent us a schematic of what they thought we wanted and we placed an order for a whole bunch of equipment. A few weeks later, a van arrived with a whole bunch of blue boxes. Last night we pulled a whole bunch of wire out of the boat. Uh, it's for the 230 volt system that we're rewiring right now to go to shore power and to our uh, solar and battery array. So what we did was we pulled um, on the starboard side of the boat, we pulled out all of the 230 volt wiring so that we can rewire it. And why we did that is because our circuit panel used to be in the starboard engine compartment. So we decided to move our circuit panel down here under the nav station. So now we have our switches are available here. And we're gonna run all of the boats 230 and 110 volt wiring to this position. Nice and safe under the nav station. You can't really hit it with your knees because it's so far recessed. So I'm taping the end of this fishing line to this cable, which we've brought up from one of the berths under the sink, through this hole, and it's gonna be going back to the nav station. Here's how we tape this up. We have the uh, Dyneema fishing line uh, taped to this end, and that will be pulled through the conduit. And then we have this other line, which is another piece of Dyneema. Um, that will trail through the conduit and we'll use later to pull another line from the nav station all the way out to the engine room. And I get to do this because my arms fit in that teeny little hole right there. <laughs> so fun for me. Actually, it is fun. Solar energy is converted into a current by the solar panels. All four solar panels are connected in series cable comes down the solar arch. It enters the engine compartment and goes into the MPPT. The current then leaves the MPPT and heads towards the port side engine compartment where the batteries are stored. There's another set of wires coming from the batteries back to the starboard side and they're connected to our inverters. And we're missing an LED light, the green one that just says that it's turned on. I think I knocked it off during installation. We also have an auto transformer that will allow us to plug in to either 110 or 230 volt. It sits right next to the starter battery on the starboard side. In the port engine compartment, we have another starter battery for the port engine, an isolation switch. The batteries all collect data and the data is relayed to this VE bus box. Here's the new four batteries, 200 amp hours each. Due to the Greek lockdown, I can't find a ratcheting strap, so I had to use rope to tie the batteries together. Here's a negative bus bar, a positive bus bar, another isolating switch, the Orion DC-DC charger allows us to charge the batteries from the diesel engines. There's one on each side. Inside at the nav station, this is the GX Touch display. This touch display is really nice and it shows the status of our entire electrical system. Right now you can see that the shore power is plugged in.
The battery monitor shows similar data, but I much prefer the GX Touch display. Now you can see that the shore power is unplugged and that we're getting uh, some wattage from the solar panels. On the top side of the nav station, we have two plugs side by side. The one closest to me is the 110 volt, and the white one or the further one is 230 volt. Victron has the ability to look at your data in several different ways. I can look at it on the GX Touch display, or I can go to a web page on my laptop and look at similar data, but in more detail. The view here is what you see in the advanced tab, and it really breaks down your data in many different ways. I think Victron's done an excellent job displaying as much data as you can about your system. This is what we see on our smartphones. This is real time connecting to one of the batteries and it shows the four cells and some data about the battery. This is the battery monitor and you can see live data, historical data, even some trends. Within the trend graph page, there's some menus that you can choose to show different types of data. You can also connect to the same web portal on your smartphone as you could on, say, a laptop. This is the smart solar page within a smartphone. And you can see live data. This is historical data. You can download this too if you'd like to keep it. And again, trends, which is really nice. Another thing that I wanted to report on is that we did a 24-hour test of our solar system and batteries. On December 23rd, when it's close to the shortest day of the year, but it was sunny, we decided to try and go 24 hours with our batteries only and just see what our results were. Granted, we're still in the shipyard, we're not on the ocean, but that shouldn't matter too much. We unplugged from the shore power at 7 a.m. and we went through the whole day. The batteries were just fine. They stayed up around 100%. We have a freezer and refrigerator running. Plus we use our laptops plugged in most of the day. We had the stereo running. We just acted like it was a normal day for us. We started to shut down uh, unnecessary things in the boat around uh, an hour left before sunset when we were still getting sun hitting the solar panels, but it was starting to weaken. And we treated it as if we we're anywhere in the world not on shore power for the rest of the night. When we got up the next morning about six, which is around sunrise, we had about 30% of battery left and we went to bed with about 80%. So overnight it consumed, uh, the energy systems on the boat consumed about 50% of the battery. About uh, almost seven, the sun was starting to hit the solar panels. We ran our tea kettle, and from the 30% before the tea kettle was turned on, it consumed another 10% of the batteries just running the tea kettle. So by 7 a.m., we had uh, right around 20% battery left. Then the sun started hitting the solar panels and it charged again we decided to declare the test a success and we determined that with our existing systems 
uh, we're going to be just fine if we keep in mind that we are in fact using batteries and we don't have an unlimited supply of electricity on board. So I think we're going to be okay. I think it's a, it was a good test. It was a, almost the shortest day of the year. We are fairly far north, more north than I think we would typically be if we we're sailing around uh, the areas that we want to sail. So we should have more solar energy uh, being created for the batteries if we we're further south and uh, not in winter because we'd have more direct uh, sunlight from above the solar panels. So it was a good test for us. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to see more videos, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments about today's video, please put them in the comment section below. We'd love to read them. We'll see you next time on Sailing Blackbird.